Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Matt Powers, Sports Memorabilia. Hey, uh, I speak to kind of uh, collectors every single week, it seems like, that are just kind of getting into collecting autographs. And it got me thinking, you know, what would I want to, uh, tips I would want to hear or someone to teach me as I got started collecting autographs. And so I came up with five quick and easy tips. Uh, if you are just getting into collecting autographs, that should help uh, make the process a little uh, easier for you and a, a lot more fun. So, uh, number one, this is probably the most important, hence I put it number one. Um, if I were just collecting autographs, just getting started, I would hope somebody would tell me to only buy first person authenticated autographs. Now, what that means is you are buying autographs direct from the source. So, you're buying something or an autograph that is authenticated by uh, a few major uh, companies that do a good chunk of the signings in this country, okay? So let me give you an example. Uh, major League Baseball authentication would be one that you would look for for baseball autographs, okay? Major League Baseball, um, oh gosh, a number of years ago, started their own authentication program. Uh, and what that means is they have uh, representatives who attend these baseball signings um, at least ones that are uh, held by um, Major League Baseball licensee holders. And they will have a witness there uh, verifying all the autographs. So if, let's say for example, uh, Mike Trout is doing an autograph signing, uh, a Major League Baseball representative will be there witnessing the actual signing and putting a unique numbered hologram on your item. And then that number is then verified on Major League Baseball's website. It'll state the item, the date that it was signed, uh, if there's any inscriptions, etc. So they also do that for game use items too, but uh, we're just specifically talking about autographs today. So that would be one particular company. Uh, TriStar is another company out of Texas. Um, they represent Tom Brady, for example. So anything Tom Brady you're buying from TriStar. Uh, Steiner Sports, uh, I would stick to probably their newer stuff, uh, which has a, a numerical number on there, which is also verified in the database. A lot of companies are going to this, they're getting rid of that old paper COA because people have been copying these paper COAs and it's just kind of been creating a mess. So I would just stick to the numbered holograms um, for Steiner on those ones, okay? Uh, upper deck authentication is another good one. Michael Jordan signs with them, uh, LeBron James, Tiger Woods, I mean some really big names that you probably want to have in your collection at some point. Uh, upper deck had some funny issues happen where they lost their database apparently from 2002 uh, in previous years, so it kind of creates a little bit of a mess. You have to like email them and then they verify the number and I don't know how they do it on their end. If you're gonna buy something Upper Deck authenticated, what I would suggest doing is either A, buy it direct from their website, uh, or two, if you are buying something from another source that's Upper Deck authenticated, number one, make sure it has the, the COA card that's with it, and number two, make sure that that number is verified in the actual Upper Deck database, okay? Before you buy it, email Upper Deck, ask them questions. They're usually somewhat quick to get back to you. I would say within 48 hours, maybe they'll get back to you. So, I mean, that's that's not too bad. Um, and then also check out the, of course, what the actual autograph looks like. Make sure that matches up to, you know, other Upper Deck authenticated pieces and whatnot. Um, you know, Fanatics is another good company too. They do a numbered hologram system too. That's also verified in a database. Uh, Panini Authentic does the same thing too. Um, they represent Kobe. Uh, so if you're looking for something Kobe, they're a good source for that. And then you're gonna see a ton of certs out there for companies like JSA, so James Spence Authentication, and PSA DNA, and then also uh, Beckett Authentication, okay? They do witness certificates of authenticity, okay? And what that means is they, again, just like in the Major League Baseball program, they have a representative from their company that comes to the actual signing and is there witnessing uh, whichever athlete or celebrity is signing that particular time, and they put their uh, unique sticker on the actual item, and that is also verified in the database. You also get a COA card with that same number on there, and on that card it'll say that hey, this is uh, was, was witnessed by a representative from one of the from JSA, for, say for example. So um, when you're buying stuff for JSA, PSA, or Beckett, if you're just getting out started, I would recommend that you buy witness stuff. Um, that's 100% authentic. They also, they do third-party authentication too, so don't get that confused. So um, what that means is people who, let's say they got something done in person, they wanted to have it authenticated because they wanted to sell it at some point. 
they would send in autographs to one of these three companies and have them authenticate it. And what they do is they give their opinion, say, um, basically, you know, on the research that we've done and known examples that we deem this to be an authentic autograph. Okay, that's uh, calls a you know, like a basic cert is what they call that. Uh, I would just stay away from those just for the time being when you're getting started. Um, those are those are good certs to begin with. Don't get me wrong, but I just I think it's just easier when you get started off to know what you're buying is 100% authentic and start with the the witness stuff. That'd be a good way to go. Uh, number two is only buy small things when you're getting started. So what I mean by that is like autograph baseballs, autograph football mini helmets, hockey pucks, like eight by 10 photos. This stuff tends to be easier to display so it doesn't take up a bunch of room. Uh, and it's also uh, tends to be on the cheaper side. So these are the most kind of quote unquote inexpensive items that you can buy. Um, I would probably tend to stay away from jerseys if I'm just getting started. Reason being is one, those are more expensive uh, than those other items. And two, you typically have to get them framed, which of course adds a bunch of cost onto um, your uh, investment there. So um, again, when you're just getting started out, you probably got maybe a small budget you're dealing with. I would stick to those smaller items there. Uh, also in that way, in case you make a mistake, you know, you buy something that's not one of those uh, authenticated items, you know, uh, you, and you know, you, you, it's, or it's just an athlete you just don't like anymore or a team you don't follow. Um, it doesn't hurt you really all that bad in the long run. So that's what I would do. And as you get more proficient in buying autographs and you really understand like what athletes you really like and what teams you really like, um, and you save up some money for it and you want to go out and get that Jersey, uh, then you can go ahead and do that. Cause you know, you've, you've, uh, you know, done your research and you spent the time understanding what you like. Uh, number three is don't overpay for framing. Now, just get the basic framing done if you're gonna be collecting like eight by 10 photos, 11 by 14s, whatever you're gonna be doing there. Uh, Hobby Lobby's an excellent resource for that. They got frames for like 15 to 20 bucks, you know, just some basic stuff. You know, you're not gonna be able to get some fancy, um, you know, suede matting for that kind of um, price point there. But you're not really looking at that. You just wanna kinda of display it. You can always upgrade the framing later on. Um, you know, as you get more experience too, you can uh, do uh, some custom plaques in there. You can get some custom eight by 10 photos and you can do a whole bunch of fancy stuff. I would just keep it real simple. You know, keep it simple, stupid as what people have always told me. And I would just do really inexpensive framing. Hobby Lobby, again, great resource for stuff like that. Uh, number four, where do you store your collectibles once you've got them? Uh, <clears throat> if you live in the Midwest like I do, we have basements and basements are perfect for that because the temperature tends to stay pretty consistent throughout the year. It doesn't get too hot, doesn't get too cold. It's kind of perfect throughout the entire year. Um, I would tend to store stuff in, in a room like that and also a room that doesn't have uh, direct sunlight too. Sunlight is the enemy of autographs. It'll make your things fade so quick. So keep them out of obviously direct sunlight, but I would keep them out of all sunlight. I actually saw a, an interesting tip from a guy one time that I thought was kind of cool and he, uh, when he displays his stuff, nobody's coming over to his house, he puts a little post-it note over the autograph. So <clears throat> there's nothing direct coming onto it there and it just kind of, it kind of looks funky. But then when people come over to his house, he just takes the post-it notes off and then boom, he can display the stuff. And then when they leave, it goes ahead and puts them back on there. So just an extra kind of step you can take to make sure that your autographs last uh, as long as you like to keep collecting. So uh, also UV protective glass on your frames and also on your display cases is another big tip that's going to help uh, with those autographs staying in the best pristine uh, condition. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, yes, <clears throat> certain autographs, you know, are going to fade over time a little bit. Okay, it's just the way it is. You look at any Babe Ruth ball. Okay, um, Roger Maris, Mickey Mantle, for example. You know, depending on when the era they were signed in and, and what type of pen was used, and you know how the ball has been kept, and whether or not it has greasy hands on it. You know, those are a lot of. Um, <clears throat> those are a lot of factors that go into it. That's going to affect the condition of the autograph too. So let's try to keep our hands off the ball, those greasy hands, always touch baseballs when on the seams and keep in mind UV protective glass and out of direct sunlight. Okay. And number five is, uh, another super important aspect that I think kind of gets overlooked a little bit is find a dealer that, um, you can build a relationship with and one that you, uh, start to trust. Okay. And <clears throat> this can be someone online like myself, <clears throat> excuse me, or you can find like your local card shop or, you know, local sports memorabilia shop, depending on where you live. 
but most people probably buy their autographs online now. Um, you just kind of see just the uh, industry is just kind of being shifted more towards that uh, as, as card shops kind of close down and, and whatnot. Um, but I would make sure that you uh, get with somebody who's going to teach you about the industry and not just looking to sell you something all the time. You know, give you little tips to how to you know protect your collectibles, or hey, did you see so and so is doing a signing? Ooh, you know, I would hold off on that and that signing. I bet you it'll be cheaper later on. You know, or um, just giving you little tips like that, just sharing their experience with you. Uh, I think that's a a very undervalued um, part, really, in any industry. You know, the more you can learn about what to do and what not to do. Uh, the, and the quicker you do that, the, the least amount of mistakes you're going to make and the more fun you're going to have because nobody likes making a mistake and, and kicking themselves for it. So, um, and Plus, you know, if you have questions for something like that, you'll know exactly where to go to and you know that that person is going to teach you uh, everything they can about that particular topic. And if they don't know, they don't know, and maybe they can point you in the right direction um, for somebody who can help you. So, um, you know, the heart of the teacher, I think, is kind of what you're looking for when you buy something, uh, especially since you're considering you know, investing a decent amount of money into this collection, you know, I mean, you wouldn't buy a house from someone who, you know, really didn't understand uh, real estate or was just pushing you to buy a particular house that you didn't want, you know, you want someone in real estate who says, well, hey, what are you looking for? What do you want from a house? Let me go to work for you. And that's kind of how we do it in the sports memorabilia industry, you know, you know, you tell me what you're looking for in your collection, or if you're looking to get a gift for someone or whatnot. And I say, hey, you know, what's your budget? Okay, well, you know, I wouldn't do this. I would probably do this, and, and here's why, and you tell me what the best decision is for you. And that's kind of how I always phrase things. So I always just give people the information, and if they ask, I can tell them what I would think, and then uh, let them make the decision. So hopefully that helps you out. If you guys got any other tips that maybe you've heard that really helped you early on in your autograph um, endeavors, go ahead and post them below. Let me know. I'm always interested to hear what everybody says. Uh, you know, has to say and uh, always check out the website powersportsmemorabilia.com if you guys got any questions or anything that I can help you with just go ahead and give me a holler you guys can find me on social media or you can contact me through the website thanks again guys